town of Waimati on the east coast of New Zealand's South Island was the motorsport capital from 1959 through to 1966 and home of the Waimati 50. Well, in 2015, not a lot's changed. Every Labour weekend, the sleepy little town comes alive to the revving of engines and the shredding of tyres. The second event of the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 is the Van Lowen Super Sprint. Second in class, Paul Gowman in his V8 RX-7. One timed lap to decide the super sprint, but you get four goes at it. Best in class three, classic two wheel drive and a contender for overall honours, Bert Murray in the RX7. Chris Lancaster had his Suzuki around the lap in 104.82. Good enough to take the 1301 to 1600cc class. Consistently at the front of any event he enters is Peter Fred, best in class five, naught to 1300. Matt Summerfield had finished fourth in League One of the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series overall championships, and that was the gravel of the hill climb. Here around the streets, he again finished fourth in the Castro-led Subaru. His best time in unlimited four-wheel drive, 57.68. It had been on the gravel events he starred in over the year, including winning the infamous Ashley Forest Rally Sprint, and here on the tarmac didn't look his usual smooth self. A second on the Waimati Pharmacy hill climb with some hasty front end repairs meant a good result here on the tarmac would see Darren Galbraith right in contention for overall honours as well. His 55-22 meant he was on the podium with just two to come. Third place here in the Cool Air Mitsubishi, putting the pressure on both Richard Vaddock and the overall series champion from last year, Michael Tall. real drama for the defending champion. Posting a quick lap time on his first try was the only luck he had. His four-wheel drive upgrades Mitsubishi breaking the drive line in his second lap and consigning the car to the trailer for the rest of the event. Putting a repeat championship for the Christchurch driver in real jeopardy. His only one lap time of 54.89, good enough for second place. For Richard Baddock, the Van Lowen Super Sprint had always been his downfall for overall championship honours. Blazingly fast on the loose stuff, as his win in the Waimati Pharmacy hill climb had shown, he had always played second fiddle to the talls on the tarmac. With Lauder and Michael under a bit of a mechanical cloud, and two wins from two starts so far, could this be his year? First on the street sprint in 53-76. So Richard Baddock keeps his run of first places going by winning the Van Lewin Group Super Sprint from Michael Tall and Darren Galbraith. Matt Summerfield through in fourth place. In the overall situation, it is Baddock on top from Darren Galbraith, Michael Tall, Matt Summerfield and Jeff Williamson. The second Ellis Lee Farms Invitational had half the excitement of the first. The big crowd packed around the street circuit would be on the edge of their seats. Could Stu Rogers do the double? Here's the lineup. One of the more interesting cars in the Invitational was the little Renault Dolphin. Luckily, this year at Waimati, John Miller, the original car's owner and builder, was watching its progress. Gearboxes for uh, speed speedboats out of rotary hoe gears. So uh, that was how what we used in there to, to turn the uh, drive back here. Yeah. Most of it's just junk that came out of uh, the, you know, the junkyards at the time. And, uh, yeah, but it, uh, it always went very quick, but it was very fragile. Brett Stevens had the honour of driving this piece of history at Waimati. <laughs> What's it like to drive? Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a real beast. It's, uh, but it's a, a real privilege to uh, drive such a piece of history that was created by such an innovative uh, Kiwi. Innovative Kiwis and historic motor cars is what the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 is all about. Neil, I guess the Waimati 50 is made for a car like yours. Uh, ah, yeah, it's been here a lot of times in the past, and it's great to bring it back again. So yeah, it's really good. Homecoming. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, the car's been around since the early 70s. Um, it was built by Neville Boone from Christchurch originally, um, and then he built this one up again um, around the mid 90s, and I've had it ever since. And after Neville passed away, unfortunately, and so I intend to just keep bringing it out to these types of meetings. It's just great fun, great, awesome weather, awesome people. It's really good. 
So once again, some of these historic cars of significance will do battle around the streets of Waimati for the Ellis Lee Farms Invitational. And away they go, and it's Bruce Brown that's stolen a march on the rest of the field. Looks like Morgan Wallace and the Jaguar through in second place. Randall Diggs there in the second of the Datsuns. The Jaguar wants to argue about it as they go around the Lethwick contracting corner, down past the War Memorial, under the uh, pedestrian bridge, and out onto the main street proper. Bruce Brown has uh, got the lead, but can he hold on to it? There's eight laps still to come, and the fast boys are coming once again from the back. And there is one of them. You saw just a glimpse there of Jim Little and also of John Hepburn. Hepburn in the Holden Monaro. Jim Little in the E49 Challenger uh, Valiant Charger. So this is uh, Randall Diggs up into second place now. Morgan Wallace in that historic Jaguar through in third. Then we go back to John Hepburn, past New Zealand track racer, past New Zealand track racing champion, an ace on two wheels and four. Hepburn from Timaru making his debut here at Waimati, but they're all chasing Brownie and they're not making too much impression on him. Diggs through in second. There is Hepburn, Morgan Wallace in behind him. Then I think we would get our first glimpse at Jim Little in the E49 Charger. Jim, a winner of the uh, historic Benson and Hedges races back in the days, back in the mid-70s. Uh, Bruce Brown, one of the challenges in all sorts of classic racing. They're on board here taking the uh, Drummond and Etheridge on board camera shots from Neville Green's little 100E Anglia. Another very historic car just up ahead of him is the 1938 Chevy Coupe of Grant Sylvester. Sylvester runs wide and Green goes up the inside to take the spot. He's following Brent Bones Collins in the Exton Grindley RX-7. There it is, the number 24, powered by a V6 Buick. Runs around about 600-odd horsepower. Got second in the first Invitational behind Stu Rogers in the Nissan. You're on board here with John Hepburn, currently sitting in second place. Bruce Brown, the fast disappearing Datsun at the front of him. Make that third place because uh, Randall Diggs is sitting in second at the moment in the Triple S. There he is. And there is Hepburn. I know they made some changes to the car in the gaps between the first and second races. Interesting to see if it pays off. Morgan Wallace in the uh, Jaguar, once uh, owned and driven by Angus Hislop and the late great Denny Holm. Wallace has owned that car for quite some time. You're on board here with uh, Tony Denson in the A9X Tirana, further down through the field as we go back to the front group. They start the Constantina up now. So they work their way into Slee Street. Down past the Royal Tavern, they'll turn 90 degrees. Meantime, Brent Bones Collins has got all he can handle trying to get around Morgan Wallace as they go under the McEwen Petroleum Pedestrian Bridge and out onto Queen Street, the main street here at the Waimati 50. There is Stu Rogers. He won the first race, remember, right in behind him. Andy Robertson in the Volvo. Behind him, it's uh, Grant Sylvester. You're on board here with Peter Templeton in the Holden Dealer Team Commodore replica. Morgan Wallace still holding out Brent Bones Collins. Jim Little right in behind them. So they're slowly but surely getting uh, their way to the front of the field. Collins dives down the outside this time of the Jag. Can he make the pass stick as they hit down into the finish straight? I think they can. Yes, he does. So the ex Don Grindley Oscar championship winning car, the Mazda RX-7 powered by the V6 Buick, goes into fourth place now. Ahead of them, two Datsuns are holding. Can they catch them? Eight laps in the Ellerslie Farms Invitational. It brought the big crowd at Waimati to their feet in race number one. Will it do it again? On board here with Hepburn. This is the battle for first and second. Up ahead of him, it is Bruce Brown. Stu Johns in the Fiat 125. Just uh, holding the proceedings up a little bit there. Ray Diggs gets a little bit closer now. There is Brent Bones Collins. Once again, Collins has come from the back of the field in the RX-7, so it's been another great drive. Stu John's just trying to get out of the way of this battling foursome it will be in a minute. Brownie though holding out the um, fire-breathing Holden of John Hepburn for the moment. Then it is Randall Diggs, then it is this man, past TRS champion of New Zealand, past Mini 7 champion of New Zealand, past RX 7 champion of New Zealand. We're on board here with the past New Zealand track racing champion. That is John Hepburn trying every which way he can to get around the flying Bruce Brown, but you can see just how nimble the little Datsun is as they go around the uh, Lethwick contracting corner, past the War Memorial, past the... Uh, Mural on the side of the buildings here at Waimati. There's an absolute freight train as they head down into Slee Street. Once again, you can put a blanket over the top four. You're riding with a man in second place. Can he get a little bit closer? Can he use the extra power of the Monaro to get around the flying Bruce Brown? Just look how nimble the little Datsun is, and it's holding the big V8 behemoth behind him. And right behind Hepburn, it is 
Brent Collins in the RX-7 and not too far away from that fight, Randall Diggs once again using the handling of the little Datsun to stay in contention. So that's the first four of them as they go out under the Rollinson Engineering Bridge heading down towards the finish straight now. Brownie holds on to it. Hepburn or just gets a little bit sideways. Collins thinks about going down the inside, can't make the pass work. Turn down in front of the big spectator grouping here, and it's still Brownie in the front. Collins has got all he can handle from Hepburn at the moment. It's the other way around. Hepburn gets a little bit sideways, but I think there was a problem from Collins as well, and he can't capitalise on it. And he noses the Mazda right under the rear spoiler of the Monaro. That's the battle for second and third. Randall Dix is there. Should any of those two make a mistake? Out in the front, dancing his way around the street circuit that is the Ellis Lee Farms Invitational. Race number two for them is Bruce Brown. Rain pitter-pattering down on the windscreen now, and that's going to negate the horsepower advantage that Hepburn and Collins and the likes has. Stu Rogers' uh, little Nissan has stopped on the side of the racetrack. So we lost the winner from race number one. This battle continues. You're on board once again with Hepburn, and you can see the rain dots on the television camera lens. Is Bruce Brown going to hold on to this? The laps are winding down. Under the Rollison Engineering overbridge they go once again, down into the finish straight. Checkered flag comes out and he's done it. Bruce Brown gets it done. The giant killing performance from the little Datsun of Bruce Brown. He holds out John Hepburn and also Bones Collins. And it was what about that? It's not often that a Datsun 1200 beats the uh, V8 monster that is John Hepburn's Monaro. Well, Brownie might have beat him in the race, but he won't beat him in the burnout stakes. And John Hepburn doesn't need any encouragement to put on a show for the big crowd here at the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50. Bruce Brown does the job in the second of the Ellerslie Invitational. The historic Forks Tavern, or as locals say, the Forks, was the servicing area for the Makiki Fries Rally Sprint, the third and final leg of the overall championship series. Ahead of the competitors, nearly six kilometres of challenging, flowing gravel roads. The big news was the return of the defending overall champion, Michael Tall, but in a different car. Uh, at the start line of the uh, the super sprint, the uh, clutch slipped a little bit and then I think broke something in the clutch and it started making bad noises so we put a, the best effort we could in to do a reasonable time on the first run and then put it on the trailer and uh, that's it for the, uh, for the weekend. Thick choking dust and deep gravel awaited the drivers but as the runs uh, continued and the time started to drop, Usual suspects came to the fore and their titanic battle for overall championship honours continued. Christchurch's Phil Walker had his sweet sounding RX-7 round the gravel roads that make up the Makiki Fries Rally Sprint in 5.13.88. But the fastest RX-7 was that of Bert Murray taking class three in 4.49.52 for 12th overall. Brendan Fisher for Omamaru took third in class 5 0 to 1300 with a time of 5.19.02. With only one run in the books, Chris McLean in the Corolla took class 5 honours, beating local Ben Terry by 0.35 of a second in the process. For Ben, who got his full four runs in, second would be as good as it would get. Local Robbie McKenzie had won class four at Saturday's hill climb. Here, he was again too good in the rally sprint, taking the class in 5.10.53. Chris Lancaster would take his Suzuki Swift to second in the 1301 to 1600cc class in 5.21.91. Another to finish runner-up in class on the hill climb was Belkluth's Paul Galman in his V8 Mazda. He did it again here at the rally sprint in 5.06.47. The winner in Class 2 was Dylan Cameron in his DX Corolla. The Toyota stopping the clocks with a 4.50.65. Tenth place overall went to Gore's Craig Abernathy in his Mitsubishi Evo 5, 4.48.05. Ninth overall was Timaru's Mark Taylor in his Mitsubishi Evo 6.5. His time, a 4.47.22.
James B had finished ninth on the hill climb. He went one better here at the rally sprint, eighth in 4.45.46. Jim Anderson is one of the tireless workers behind the scenes here at the Waimati 50. His son is fast becoming a great driver, seventh in 4.44.61. Michael Tall was next in the Magnum Compliance Centre Subaru. It was the first time Tall had driven the car and would finish sixth with a 4.42.76, kissing goodbye to his championship aspirations. Fifth place went to a man that is more used to fixing them than driving them. Sam Hurley is a regular on the Matt Summerfield crew. His time, 4.41.79. Jeff Williamson was fourth in his Mitsubishi, one spot better that he finished on the hill climb. His time, 4.40.06. A third in the hill climb, a fourth in the street sprint, and a third here in the Makiki Fries rally sprint meant that Matt Summerfield was consistent. His 4.25.53, good enough again. A good performance here at the Makiki Fries Rally Sprint could wrap up the overall title over the three events. 0.25 of a second had separated Richard Baddock from Darren Galbraith in the hill climb, with Baddock coming out on top. This time, the positions would be reversed. It had been a hard but fair fight for overall honours at the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series. Second to Baddock on the hill, third to him on the streets, he would win here in 4.18.48 to Baddock's 4.19.27. That was good enough for Darren Galbraith. So Darren Galbraith gets the win and wins the battle, but not the war in the overall contention. Richard Baddock is second on the rally sprint from Matt Summerfield and Jeff Williamson. Overall, it is Richard Baddock taking his first ever overall championship here at Waimati from Galbraith, Summerfield, Williamson, and a great drive from Keith Anderson. In the classes, in the unlimited four-wheel drive, as we said, Richard Baddock, unlimited two-wheel drive goes to Dylan Cameron. Classic two-wheel drive, Bert Murray. Chris Lancaster wins 13.01 to 1,600cc. While the rally sprint was playing out on the gravel, the fastest of the fast were about to get out for top honours and a place in Ken's top ten in the street attack. The hottest of hot favourites, five-time champion Glenn Frew from Mosgill in the Mitsubishi. First to go in Ken's top ten was Waimati local Joe Sadler in his Mazda Batwing RX-7. His best time of 1.27.07. In the shootout, he did a 1.27.25. Not bad, with rain falling on the windscreen. Stu Rogers had already won one race of the Ellisling Farms Invitational and with 650 plus horsepower on tap in the factory GTR replica and a 125 already on the books, the stage was set for a fast time. 126.77, another victim of the changing conditions. Logan Cornish had been coming to Waimati for years in his older Subaru legacy. A from the ground up rebuild before the 50 promised great things. And they came for the man from Christchurch, his 124.17, putting him right in contention. Omaru's Gareth O'Hara was desperate to make Ken's top 10 in his V8 powered Nissan Sylvia, another Waimati regular. He did just that. The only problem was he didn't get to finish his shootout run. Sylvia ending the run against the concrete. Aaron Paris was in a beautiful Sierra Cosworth, and judging by the oohs and the ahs from the crowd every time it came out, a crowd favourite to boot. The all wheel drive forward stopped the clocks with a 127.91, good enough for eighth place. James Lambeck had posted a 124 in run five, but in Ken's top 10, couldn't match his best result rain sprinkling down and his run at 127.24, six quickest and a very creditable performance in the conditions. Chris Thompson in his Cyberg four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Mirage was caught by the weather. His best time in fact his last two runs in the low 120s. Keane's top 10 weather affected run netted him a 124.81, fourth overall. Whether it was a good or bad idea was yet to be determined, but car owner Logan Cornish and his good mate Daniel Burgess were double driving the legacy. Daniel was the quicker of the two with a 122.66. Brett Stevens and the others to go, this at the moment put him in third place. Daniel, uh, Burgess isn't going to 
Pachu Acres, Brett Stevens was swapping between the V8 Reno and his lightning quick Mitsubishi Evo 5. He made his first appearance at Waimati in the Mitsubishi count with a best run time of 1.19. Here in the weather affected shootout, he was down in 1.23.06. In run number five, just before the top ten shootout, Glenn Frew had posted a 1.18 second clocking. The five-time champion would start as a favourite, but this happened as he came out of the Lethwick contracting corner. Well, a huge upset in the McEwen Petroleum Street Attack Kings Top 10 because no six-time championship for Glenn Frew, but the congratulations goes to Daniel Burgess in the legacy. Ken McEwen, the official sponsor here at Waimati, presents this beautiful trophy to a happy but overcome Daniel Burgess. Congratulations, I know you guys have been trying to win this for a while now. Yeah, well, this is our fourth year, so we better <laughs> give it death this year, yeah. <laughs> Hard work out there? Yeah, well, at the end it was pretty slippery. Um, bit of handbrake and a, yeah, a lot of clutch, but we got there. So the Cornish and Burgess double driven Subaru taking first and third, the meat and the sandwich, Brett Stevens and the Mitsubishi in second. <laughs> With a first at the Waimati Pharmacy Hill Climb on the Saturday, another first in the Van Lowen Group Super Sprint, and a second in the Makiki Fries Rally Sprint, Christchurch's Richard Baddock took out the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series Overall Championship for 2015.